strength arcane builds have gotten quite a lot of new things in the DLC. With the new things plus everything these builds already had, strength arcane is not only very powerful, but also extremely versatile. The versatility is so much that I actually have 7 different setups to share, and they all use the exact same stats. You can use the timestamps in the video to skip around to which build setups you're interested in the most. Also, just keep in mind that I am on New Game Plus 3. Before we cover the build setups, there is a secret synergy that Strength and Arcane have together that is important to understand. For weapons that on a standard affinity scale exclusively with Strength and no other stat at all, if you put a weapon like that on an occult affinity, it will get a B scaling in both Strength and Arcane, essentially making it like a quality affinity, except Arcane instead of Dexterity. So once you start to get high enough level to pump more points into those stats, Occult actually results in higher damage than Heavy for these pure Strength weapons. And there is also a bit of a secret with the Blood affinity as well. The amount of Blood loss a weapon gets on Blood affinity is higher for heavier weapon classes, with colossal weapons and swords getting the most. So even though these are big slow weapons, they can still be adept at applying bleed, especially with the right Ashes of War. And these weapons also maintain a B scaling in strength on blood affinity, so they can still have a high AR. The first weapon that we are using that utilizes this synergy is the Sword Lance. This is one of the new weapons and is a heavy thrusting sword. But Sword Lance is unique in that when put on a status affinity, it gets the same status buildup as a colossal weapon. So we put it on bleed, and with my stats, get 169 blood loss. And since this is a heavy thrusting sword, we can pair it with a great shield, and the light attacks can be used while holding the shield up, which can be great if facing a very aggressive enemy. But even better than that are the Ashes of War that we can use on this weapon. I have two build up setups for Sword Lance. The first one is using the Impaling Thrust Ash of War. This is a fast, hard hitting skill that deals a high 33 stance damage without any buffs. And if we use the Stone Barbed tier, that goes up to 43 and can be taken up even farther to 51 with Stormhark Dean. Stormhark Dean is a spirit summon that provides an aura buff, which buffs physical damage by more than Golden Vow but also increases stance damage by 20%, so it's a fantastic summon to use in any strength build, but just know that it doesn't stack with Golden Vow. But with that, we can break most bosses' stance in 2-3 casts of Impelling Thrust, while doing great damage and still having great bleed buildup as well. For this setup, the Talismans are Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, the Spear Talisman, and the fourth one can be flexed out, ideally it should be the two-headed turtle, but you can just use any defensive talisman you might need for a particular fight. And in the Wanderer's Physic, the Stone Barbed tier, then the second one can be whatever you want, Stamina Recovery or the Opaline Heart tier are both great picks. And now for the second Sword Alliance build, we put it on the Blood Tax Ash of War. This hits three times in rapid succession, while healing on each hit. Blood attacks can't be put on Colossal weapons, but Sword Lance can cheat around that because it has that Colossal level bleed despite not being a Colossal weapon, so Blood Tax is going to be applying 169 bleed on each hit. And this skill is not only great for applying bleed, but also stacking consecutive attack buffs. With those two things combined, this setup does excellent damage while having a bit of added sustain. For this build, we use Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Rotten Ringed Sword Insignia, and the fourth slot can be Millicent's Prosthesis, Godskin Swaddling Cloth, or any defensive talisman you want. And in the Wanderer's Physic, Thorny Cracked Tier plus the Blood Sucking Tier. Since we will be healing often with Blood Tax, the HP drain of the Blood Sucking Tier is not a big deal. So that's an entire extra 20% damage this build gets to utilize. Moving on from Sword Lance, we aren't using a new weapon here, but it is on a new Ash of War, and the weapon is Prelates Inferno. It should be Giant's Crusher, but I prefer the looks of the Prelates, 
and their AR is pretty similar anyway. So, as mentioned, on our build, Colossal Weapons have 169 blood loss on the Bleed Affinity, the same as Sword Lance, except with a vastly higher attack rating. Normally, a Colossal Weapon wouldn't have access to fast multi-hits, but that's where the new Ash of War, Savage Lion's Claw, comes in. Savage Lion's Claw is a lot like regular Lion's Claw, except it has a follow-up attack that hits twice, making the Ash of War a fast 3-hit combo, and all three of those hits apply that 169 bleed and can stack consecutive attack buffs. So combine all that together, and you end up getting monstrous damage. For the talismans in this build, use Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exultation, Rotten Winged Sword Insignia, neither Melisand's Prosthesis or Defensive Talisman. And for the Physic, use Thorny Cracked Tear and Opaline Heart Tear. We trade with Savage Lion's Claw a lot, so Opaline Heart Tear is very helpful as that second slot. Next up is another bleed weapon, one that you've probably heard a lot about already, the Blood Fiend's Arm. This is a colossal weapon, so it gets that super high blood loss buildup, but this weapon takes it even farther as it has innate arcane scaling, so it gets a C scaling in arcane on bleed rather than the usual D, and still maintains a B scaling in strength. That C scaling in arcane results in a blood loss of 204 rather than 169, and the weapon's charged attack has two hits that both apply bleed, so bleed will pretty much always proc within one to two charged heavies, as long as both of those hits connect. And those charged heavies deal immense stance damage, so most things will stance break in a one to two as well. And we can make enemy stance break in, in even just one charged heavy, with the combination of Stormhark, Stormhark Dean, Stone Barbed Tear, and the Ash of War we are using, Crag Blade. With all that combined, it's like 92 stance to damage per charged heavy. You can use Endure or Royal Knight's Resolve instead of Crag Blade, but I don't like those because we have to keep recasting them every time. This weapon does have some downsides though. It has really bad reach, so if you aren't hugging the enemy, those charged heavies are not going to hit. They are pretty slow, so sometimes the enemy will just move while you're trying to do it. That and the weapon's AR is pretty low for a Colossal, so on hits that don't bleed, it's not going to do a lot of damage, but it is still very strong in the right fights for it. So for the build, the Talismans are Axe Talisman, Two-Handed Sword Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exultation, then either the Two-Headed Turtle or a Defensive Talisman of choice. And for the Physic, Stone Barbed Tear plus Spiked Tear. Next, we cannot forget about Moog's Sacred Spear when talking about Strength Arcane. This weapon skill had its blood loss build up nerfed in 1.12, but even ignoring bleed, the pure fire damage it deals is still astonishingly high, plus it will usually still proc bleed at least once in a full cast. That skill is a large 360 degree AoE, so it is phenomenal when exploring in the open world, often taking out enemies that you didn't even know were there. And even outside of its skill, Moog's Spear gets a pretty high AR, Plus, it is a great spear, so like the Sword Lance, we pair it with the Fingerprint Shield and do poking our ones while holding up the shield, if need be, against aggressive enemies. Not much more to say about this weapon, it's just the full package. So for the Talismans, you Shot of Alexander, Lords of Blood, Exultation, Fire Scorpion Charm, and the Two-Headed Turtle, or your Defensive Talisman of choice. And in the Wanderer's Physic, use the Flame Shrouding Tear and the Stone Barbed Tear. This weapon does surprisingly good stance damage when given to Stone Barbed Tear. Moving on from Bleed stuff, we have another new weapon, the Ancient Meteoric R Greatsword. This weapon is primarily used for its skill that allows it to quickly close distance while dealing great damage at the same time. This is extremely useful when facing enemies that like to back up a lot, as now you are doing damage at the same time as closing the distance with them. While this skill is great and you will use it a lot, I find it important to not overly rely on it, as this is a still a big bonky colossal sword, so it has excellent heavy attacks and jumping attacks that you'll want to use often as well. For the talismans on this one, 
We use Shard of Alexander, the two-handed sword talisman, either the claw or axe talisman, depending on if you do jump or charge attacks more. And then the last slot is the typical two-headed turtle or defensive talisman of choice. And for the Physic, Stone Bobbed tier plus the Spiked tier, but if you find you don't charge attack often, you can replace the Spiked with anything else. The last weapon we are using is the Mariah's Executioner. This is a great sword with a skill that quickly ramps up consecutive hit buffs, allowing it to melt through health bars under the right circumstances. And the skill can even stunlock most things besides an omen and under. Also, since the weapon is light enough, we can pair it with our fingerprint shield. We can't poke with the sword from behind the shield, but having the shield is still extremely useful for times when it will be easier to block an attack than dodge. Plus, being able to utilize guard counters is never bad. So for the talismans, Godfrey Icon, as this is a charged ability. Rod and Ring Sword Insignia, Millicent's Prosthesis, and Shard of Alexander. And for the Physic, Thorny Cracked Deer, and the second one is Flexible, Stone Barbed, Opaline Heart Deer, Other Stamina Recovery one are all great. Now that we've covered those weapons and their Talisman and Physic setups, let's talk about armor and stats. For the armor, here's what I've been using for every build. Helmet is always White Mask, the buff is way too good to not use. Chest piece, Grave Bard's Black Quill as it buffs the jump attacks by 10% and the wings look cool. I don't jump attack that often, but when I do, the buff is nice to have. And then just two random pieces to get to 51 poise while still medium rolling. However, when you're using Moog's Spear or the Sword Lance on Blood Tax, you'll want to be using two pieces of Onspox set. I didn't use it in this video because I didn't know that was a thing until I was already done recording all of this, but Onspock's set increases the damage of Moog Spear and blood skills like Blood Tex by 3% per piece. However, it's a very light armor set, so you'll want to just use the gloves and griefs while using a heavier chest piece to ensure you still hit 51 poise. And you'll stick with the white mask since it provides a larger buff compared to the Onspock helmet. And now for the stats, remember I am on New Game Plus 3, so I'm currently at level 262. I have 60 Vigor because it's mandatory, 50 Endurance because that's how much we need to use the Fingerprint Shield with the weapons we use it with, 80 Strength and 80 Arcane to maximize our damage from those stats. You can reach 80 Strength with only 54 Strength when two-handing, however we're not always two-handing, so getting to 80 is still nice. Then there's 14 Dexterity for minimum requirements to use all the weapons, 25 Faith to be able to cast our buffing incantations like Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. It also lets us cast most of the Dragon Communion incantations if desired, but I never used them on this build. And then 25 Mind because I'm just pumping my levels into there now until I get to 38, so that I have to use Blue Flasks way less often. If you're trying to stay at lower levels, I really wouldn't advise trying to make this all work at level 150, as this is a very stat hungry build. The lowest I would do is like 193, the Vagabond starting class and the stats shown here. If you don't plan to use the fingerprint shield at all, then 33 endurance would be enough, allowing you to do the build at a bit of a lower level than 193. But this build really shines best when you aren't afraid to get to like level 200 to 250. But yeah, that covers the build. Overall, all of these build setups are very strong in the right scenarios, and having the freedom to swap between them all for different encounters keeps it feeling fresh and fun at all times, and prevents you from really ever having a bad matchup as well. This is easily my favorite non-dragon build that I've played so far. So if you liked today's video, please be sure to give it a like and subscribe and comment your thoughts below. And if there's a build you want me to make a video on next, please let me know in the comments. Thanks. Goodbye.